Deepika, what do you do actually? Sorry. Dipti, what uh, what do you do actually? Yeah, there are too many Dipti and Deepika, so I'm getting confused. So there are two Dipti who joined, both are me, don't worry. I just joined both from laptop and uh, phone. Uh, right. I had academics at uh, Swetcha School. Doctor. So as of now, uh, how many students are enrolled like for yeah, are online school. virtual classes like every day approximately? Yeah. So we are a new school. We are starting operations only this year uh, for kindergarten. So we had, we were in the process of admissions and uh, we did not start yet. Okay, it's just a new phase now. Yeah. Okay. And we won't be having online classes, doctor. We don't prescribe screen time for kindergarten. I know, I know. <laughs> That's, uh, that's one of the very difficult thing to actually uh, work on these times. Yeah. So our plan is to guide parents in engaging children uh, at home, but not directly have sessions with children online. So let the parents be the educator. Yeah. Do you have any branches all over India? It's just Vizag. Just so we are part of the Geetam University. Um, so this yeah. is the, the campus we have opened. We follow world of philosophy. There are other world of schools across the country, but in Vizag and Andhra Pradesh, this is the first one. I'll switch it on. Yeah, today actually a lot of my patients have also joined in, I think. Yeah, we will wait for five minutes, doctor. Yeah, and then we'll start off. No, because I think how many people have joined? Any idea? So far, I, uh, seven people. Hi, Pavika. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, good, all good. Abhi, say hi. Yeah, they're really. Oh, okay. So, how many parents are you getting from Vizag? Yeah, we had around 20 registrations, most of them Vizag. And I think we've kept it at a time, a right time, when uh, people have all had their lunch and all can join afterwards. Yeah. We have to install on this. Oh, I'm not sure. Any of your teachers, Dipti, like who have joined? Teaching staff has not joined, but we have uh, Mino and Deepika Pavanya who are our administrators. I think, yeah, muting is again another big business here. Yeah, that's what I wanted to help you with. Uh, with yeah, so you'll be able to turn on the slides. Yes, yes, you can share your slides, videos, everything. Even if I'm the host. Yeah, no issues. I'll do make them mute. I'll just tell them in the beginning only so that yeah. they all go mute. I think we're good to start, right? Yeah. We have around 15 participants. Though. Good. I think people will join in as, as and when they join. 
So the, the, you can also give out a message to all the parents like you want more people to be involved physically rather than having a screen time for the kids. Yes, definitely. That has always yeah, that, been our... Um, that philosophy should go down to all the parents so that they can educate all the kids also. Right, correct. So right now all the parents are the teachers for them. I know it's a heavy demand on all the parents. I can see their faces now. <laughs> They're not smiling. I said, okay, now we'll have to let the kids not have a screen time. It will be a big business for them then. Yes, it is hard work. It's so it's and Because many of the parents are working themselves. So it's, it's, it's tough on them if they're not keeping their kids engaged. And screen is something which gets you off for some time for the kids, especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we're good to go. We can start. Yes. You want to start off? You want me to set up some content? You start, you start uh, the foundation, then I'll take on from there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Deepti. Thanks everyone for joining today. Uh, this session is uh, uh, a part of series of sessions uh, that Swecha World of School from Vizag is conducting. Um, since the second wave and lockdown have started, a lot of parents have come to us with questions on uh, well-being of the children, either in terms of nutrition, movement, how to engage them in a healthy way, etc. So we did a session on nutrition uh, last time, and this time we wanted to address the question of how can we uh, compensate and do right when they're not getting any outdoor play time, any uh, movement in the school and just staying indoors. And especially for those uh, children who have online classes or they spend a lot of screen time, uh, postures and all are really becoming slouched, right? So we got a lot of questions and we thought it's best to have an expert answer them. And that is why we invited Dr. Anjali uh, to speak today. And uh, Dr. Anjali has kindly agreed to address all your questions. Uh, we also got a lot of your questions from the registration form. Uh, as much as possible, Dr. Anjali will guide you on them with uh, general guidance. Um, however, if you do have more specific questions that she needs to know your child uh, before uh, providing guidance, you can reach out to her after um, the session. There will be an email with her details sent to all the registered participants. And uh, Dr. Anjali conducts uh, uh, tele sessions for consultation. So feel free to reach out and uh, uh, book a session. Okay. Uh, so Dr. Anjali will introduce herself, but uh, I saw her uh, profile as I spoke to her and it is quite extensive. Not being a medical professional, I won't um, take the liberty to speak about it, but uh, she, I have heard a lot of uh, great reviews from um, her patients who are my friends and that is how I uh, reached out to her for helping this uh, set of parents who have been asking us. So over to you, doctor. Thank you, Dipti, and thank you, Swecha, for having me over for this important topic, the need of the hour during the times when we are all undergoing a lot of turmoil with being home and being glued to four walls of the house. Uh, myself, Dr. Anjali, we are, I'm a physiotherapist who've been trained in India and also in the UK. I usually deal with a lot of musculoskeletal pain management, women's health, and also cardiorespiratory care. At the moment, I'm also looking into COVID-19 rehab. And as we've all gone virtual, a lot of things I'm doing in a tele-rehab format, which is all virtual and online. So uh, coming on to the topic, we'll be talking about movement and posture for your child during the lockdown. I'll have a lot of questions for parents in the end of my session. So be open to 
uh, reply to all my questions and uh, all the kids also too. I'll be asking some questions. So we'll start off now. Uh, that's my brief introduction. So I've been trained in India and UK, as I mentioned. So now being virtually been attached with Ambicare and the birthplace. And uh, I have been a brand ambassador for physical literacy program for Pulela Gopichan. That's a badminton academy, very much in Hyderabad. And I've been the past convener for health and well-being, uh, 2018 to 2019 for Ivan Telangana CII. So I was awarded the Torchbearer Award for Healthcare by Deloitte, Mrs. Sunita Hari in the year 2020 and 2021, both progressive years. And that's me advocating physical literacy to all the kids of Pulela Gopichand Academy. And we used to run this program every Sunday on the roads of Hyderabad, very close to Triple IIT and all in Gachiboli campus, which was mainly advocating more movement, less rest for people during Sunday, especially because people wake very late on Sunday. And this is something which we did every morning on a Sunday weekend. To start off today, it's very easier to maintain a good posture habit in children, and it is to fix the problem in adulthood is quite a big problem for us. So I see many of my patients are already here. I know they have all come to me with all sorts of neck pain, back pains, knee pains. And when they come to me at an age when they have already crossed 25, 26, 27, it's very difficult to teach them something which is very essential, which is how to get a good posture or how to have a good spine, how to have a good neck posture. So in the picture below, we see all the adults are sitting in the right posture or the wrong posture. Is it a right posture or is it a wrong posture? It is not a wrong, right posture at all. Now, if I said this to a child that we need to correct you, the child will be able to format that movement pattern and this posture in the early years because the child's brain and the child's muscle and the child's movement pattern all gets registered in the brain when he is from one to seven years of age. Seven to 10 of the years of the age, the student or a child has actually formed a posture. So it's very difficult to correct certain movement patterns for them. So as parents who are listening to me and a lot of my small young pediatric children are here and listening to me, all of you will have to understand that my posture is something which I carry forward in the adulthood. So whatever I make changes, whatever I do now, will emphasize or will complete in a posture which is from 10 years from now, from 20 years from now. And having a good posture is something which we all want now. We all want because we don't want to have neck pain and back pains or any sort of ailments also. Now the posture control of our body is just not dependent on our muscles and our spine. It's dependent on our visual, our inner eye, our vestibular, which is our ear a sensory motor nervous system, which is a skin, and then comes the muscular system. So all in all together, we all work together to form a posture. So in round here, you see a picture of a lot of people standing. These are the different posture which I see in adulthood, which people get over the years because mm -hmm. either they're having a tummy which is too mm -hmm. forward or having a tummy which is too backward, or they have a slouch back or they have a hollow the back. So in either of these cases, we have a posture problem. People with these kind of postures would end up with having a back pain or a muscle pain or some kind of a knee pain or some kind of a headache issue. So in either of these cases, we have to understand how we can teach the kids not to have these postures from the growing years, from the age of one, or till seven and seven till 12. Okay, that's what our focus has to be. And especially when we are in lockdown, the kids are all the time on the bed. They're sitting on the mattresses or if at all they are online, they sit on their study table. If at all, they're just within the four walls of the house. 
the amount of movement a body needs the amount of movement a body needs to get active is also very less the amount of movement the eye needs the amount of vestibular stimulus your ears need this is all got lessened because you are in the four walls of the house so your proprioception your balance training everything comes down because of this right now all of you are seeing here i see uh, kranti vijay ruchi pavik all of you are here prabhjot you are also here so you look ask your kids to look at the picture in front of them tell me which boy or which girl is sitting properly here you can answer uh, by putting your answers on the chat box i'll come back to answering all your questions at the end so which pavika which baby is sitting properly the girl the girl is sitting properly bolo it's the girl or the boy it's the girl i think so the girl yeah pavika right the girl the girl the girl all right how about uh, uh, kranti kranti at yes a which no, kids which are not sitting properly kids are not around anjali okay all right you can tell the answer yes, to i have i have already typed it's a girl <laughs> oh it's a girl okay so it's not a gender format we are bringing in that the girls are better than the boys here it's not that what we meant but here we always want to say that if your neck is steady we always good even a small girl like pavika is able to say that my neck has to be upright we don't have to bend our neck or go forward onto my book or a chair simple thing which you will be telling your kids is always draw your neck back away from any kind of a thing which you hold in your hand which could be a book which is your laptop which is your phone or whatever it is you will have to tell this to the kid now posture is a key to the health it is very important that the moment you see a gentleman or a woman entering a uh, interview for parents i'm asking you if I, if the person is all hunched up do you think that that person has confidence yes or no do you think that person has confidence if the person is all slouched yes pavika tell me the answer if, if the person is slouched is he confident or no uh, is that person smart uh, no no right the girl is again good right or the boy is again having a hunchback which which person is good here the girl the girl okay why so why because the girl is standing straight but the boy is with... good He's job caps for pavika yeah good answer so the moment you see a boy or a girl is all hunched up what is happening is kind of compressing his abdomen his eyes are not meeting at the eye level of a individual his this is a posture which will give rise to constant headaches constant fatigue so if your child comes back from school or is coming back from his lecture which is online uh, he or she will start talking about headaches will talk about jaw pain will talk about pain in the eyes pain in the neck and also we we'll talk about poor focus so poor attention span when studying teachers will always say that the child is not able to concentrate would we'll have constant mood swings so the child is happy one moment the child is unhappy the other moment very irritated and would we'll have height reduction so generally parents the common question they reach out to me is my child is not growing or my uh, child's height has gone uh, very less or is having poor psychomotor skills okay so proprioception balance too frequent falling headaches and a constant uh, nagging joint pain in the knee joint Th these are all precursor for a kind of pain so you see this kind of a posture is not what we edu educate parents to let your child have now in this case the eye the shoulder the elbow and the knee all are coming in one straight line so you have to understand the 90 90 degree rule of thumb so when your child is standing when the child is sitting always have this kind of a posture where his shoulders 
are well stacked up on the hips. The moment you tell the child that, you know, you're not standing straight, he or she will might not take it in a positive way. What you can tell him in a way of play Carry a book on your head and imagine you're holding your book up onto your table, which is your hip. So by doing this, you let your child to understand that my book would fall off if my neck is stooped. So always tell the child, have a book on your head that will automatically let your child stand straight, sit straight. Now, the problem here comes is we can't have a shoulder problem. So, you know, the soldiers, the military posture, we can't have it all the time. You can't say sit straight all the time when you're working online, when you're studying online. Why so? Because it will cause fatigue, it will cause pain, it will cause muscle and joint pain. A lot of times people go into a lot of, uh, you know, insomnia in the night. They're all the time sitting in this military posture. So what you have to tell them is sit tall and always have, imagine that there is a balloon on your head. So if there's a balloon on your head, it is all flying up. Okay, so the balloon will fall down if I have my neck down. Imagine your head is hit by a balloon. So this is what you will be telling your kids, especially. Now in this two posture, what is happening is if your tummy muscles are all crunched up, your child will not eat well. The child will always complain of tummy pain. The child will always complain of poor appetite. And then you will say that my child is not putting on weight because his tummy muscles are all crunched up. He's always into that moment where his abdominal content, his intestine, his stomachs are all compressed. What you've got to do is elongate the volume of the stomach. He'll be able to eat well. He'll be able to digest well. Now, in the times of pandemic, when we are talking about breathing exercise so much, my child's breathing capacity to uh, improve, the key thing is the posture. Majority of the youngsters nowadays are getting affected with the pandemic, having low oxygen. Two main reasons for it is stooped posture. Try everybody now, all of you try to breathe in, having your shoulders slouched. Try to take a deep breath. Keep your shoulders slouched and try to take a deep breath. You won't be able to take a deep breath if you're slouched. The moment you open your chest and bring your shoulders apart, you give room for your chest muscles to expand, for your lungs to take in more oxygen. So all in all, posture is the key to health. Your digestion, your height, your eyesight, your balance, your proprioception, all of them will depend on the posture. And you lay the foundation for your child for a good posture as a parent. As a parent, you are important for your child's posture. And what posture you are attaining, the child is also copying you. So always remember, the way you sit, the child is copying you. The way you walk, the child is copying you. So all of you will have to understand your child is mirroring you. Okay, so you got to be the right mirror for your child. Now, how to save the kid's posture and spine? Always look at the way your child is sleeping on the bed or the mattress. Many times, child will be sleeping with legs all apart or they're not sleeping sideways or on their tummies. So have a good orthopedic pillow or a good orthopedic mattress. That is a way to give a child a good posture. Now, during the lockdown, it's important that sometimes you might let your child sleep with you on the ground floor, which is on the floor. Why floor? Because it will help the spine to adjust and rewire the neural connections and any kind of fatigue which is built up for the child because he's all the time online will also reduce the cause of that. Now, nowadays, we don't have to carry the backpack, but most of the child I've seen while coming back from school or while going to school, they have a very heavy backpack. And many of the times the backpack is always held on one shoulder. It's never held on two shoulders or it's never uh, like too light, it's too heavy. It keeps them going forward. So post the lockdown, parents, your goal is make sure the backpack or the laptop bag or whatever bag they're carrying is held in a proper way and it's not too heavy for them to carry it. And always, as I said, the third example is be the example for your child. The way you are sitting, the way you are sleeping, the way you are walking, the way you are talking, the way you are chewing your food, everything is being noticed by your child. 
So set a good example for your child. You are the one who will be teaching them good posture apart from everybody else who's involved in their good posture too. And have a good lighting in the room wherever you are child is studying. So I have a very different approach to all my uh, pediatric cases where they always complain of neck pain and back pain. Always we keep a study table towards the edge of the room. Okay, we pull the table and we just push it toward the corner of the uh, room where the room is just not lighted and we just have a lamp there. The concentration time of the child might increase because of it, but the eyesight and the volume of proprioception decreases for the child. Now, the child is already in lockdown, so we want the child to feel more open about the environment. So make the child sit in a room where there is no close atmosphere or close barrier of ball right in front of the study table. So maybe turn the study table around, let the child face the entire room and have natural light come into his study table. That is the way you can focus on improving the eyesight of the child, will also help the child to have a good posture, good balance and good proprioception. And they'll be more engrossed and more attentive in their classes. If you're always putting the child in one corner of the room, the attention span and they're able to, you know, multitask would decrease. As it is being inside the house, your proprioceptive skill, your cognitive skill, your motor skills of the child would come down. When the child was going to the school, he was getting onto the bus. So he had to climb the steps. Be very uh, conscious of the fact that the bus is not very, you know, like uh, the balance of the bus is good. The child would go and sit in the bus, then go and walk into his classroom. All these many movements when the child had, when the school was on, would help the child to develop his cognitive, proprioception and balance powers. But now when all these three things are shut, our neurological system also goes for a shutdown. Now the child is not being challenged, okay? The child is just in the corner of the house, drawn to one corner of the study table, only seeing the screen. So his eyesight is only seeing this format of the laptop. He or she cannot put his eyes up into the air also. He or she is not able to turn his eye away from the laptop for a single moment. All these things will cause his muscles around the neck and the back to get very tensed. And as a result of this, the child's posture would try to stoop. So there are so many factors attached to it. So we, the neuro-linguistic power, the programming power, the cognitive power, all of this is being challenged in the lockdown time. It's just not that the ch challenge is the movement or the posture here. Limit the time your child is sitting and doing computer games. Again, that is again one framework, laptop, media, TV, and the body is in a slouch posture. All these things will make the child very, uh, uh, like attention span of the child will just decrease because of this kind of activity. Maintain the height of the child and the chair so that when the child is seated, his feet should be touching the ground. His hands and elbows should be very well managed onto the table. So that kind of table arrangement, I'll show you later in one of the slides. Go swimming, I've mentioned here, but what people have done, many of my patients who are here, they bought a portable pool, right? If you have small kids, small children, you can buy a portable inflatable pool, put water in it and get your child in that water. Why I'm saying this is water is a good hydrotherapy, okay? It helps the child's, the buoyancy of the water would help the child to build up muscles, would help the child to increase his attention span, would also work on their balance and proprioception functions. So, so what we are in lockdown, so what we are all enclosed within the four walls of the house, you can have an flip table pool, push water in it and have it in your room, one of the drying rooms, get your kids inside that water. You are trying to build up more you know, power, action, movement, proprioception, all in one go inside that water, all right? And also check the posture with your doctor. So right now, myself, I've been doing a lot of online session for most of the kids for the past one year since the pandemic and on. And we look at the posture of the child and we give her 
proper assessment and a proper exercise protocol because each child's posture is tailor-made exercises for each child because somebody's eyeball can be turned to right or somebody's eyeball can be turned to left. So as per the child's format and assessment, every child's individual exercise programs are formatted that way. It's very important that your child's posture and movement is taken care of right at this moment. Right. So in this picture, you see the child is sitting without the leg, resting the ground, is all stooped onto the chair. But the next picture, the child is standing on sitting stall. His legs are supported on the ground. So all the mothers here, all the fathers here, make sure the child has a proper furniture arrangement, the chair and the table. Make sure the child's feet is always touching the ground. If he or she is not doing it, it will cause a lot of fatigue in the body. It will cause a lot of muscle wear and tear in the body. And then it starts from one thing after another and the pain pandemic starts for them. In UK, we always talk about a 60 minute format of activity for a child. This will help to make sure the child is not putting on too much weight. Obesity has become another pandemic to deal with, with the kids because they're not going out. And with the COVID being so much in the airborne mode and affecting most of the small children now, we got to be playing safe too. But important question and answer here is, the child who are obese, the child who are inactive are mostly getting affected with COVID, mostly getting into a system called multifaceted system, inflammatory system disease. And majority of them are getting into something called as type 1 diabetes, early onset of type 1 diabetes. So to prevent that movement, 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 your child has to move whether or not you're going out, be in the house, let your child move. I'll tell you various ways where you can engage your child and get them moving because the amount of calories they take, the amount of calories they burn out, the amount of movement they do, all these will help them protect them. It's a big vaccine for them, for the child. As long as we don't get the vaccine for the small child, we have to work on maintaining their status of no obesity. Let them not put on any weight on the tummy let them be active let them eat well but at the same time move well and engage in exercises as much as possible so what i tell them is get short burst of exercises may not be 60 minutes at one go what you could do is i have 12 hours in a day in within this 12 hours or 18 hours in a day i would try my child to get more active and i'll tell you what you should be doing in between these 12 hours or seven hours. The moment the child gets up, the moment his child is on the computer studying, the moment what all you can do. Now, I've already talked about the backpack thing. The backpack shouldn't be heavy to get the child in a stoop posture. In the second picture, you see the child is sitting so well in a very normal, neutral way with the spine supported with the back side of the chair and his chair and his feet is touching the ground. This angle is called the 90, 90 degree rule. So your shoulder to your elbow is 90 degree, your hip to your knee is 90 degree, and your knee to your feet, this entire angle is 90 degree. So the whole format of 90 degree should be measured for every time your child is sitting and studying on the computer. Now, there has been a lot of dominance on uh, one side of the body sometimes. The child's nowadays, I see uh, in many of my uh, flats or around my buildings, many of the child are indoors and they have this kind of uh, uh, scooty uh, where they are putting pressure on it and they're having one leg down. By doing this, you're creating an imbalance in the hip joint. So always keep the feet together on the rower for them. Make your child in the early years to walk barefoot as much as possible in the house today. From today, start your make, making your child walk barefoot. Why so? As it is, the child is having no proprioception, no walking at all. The feet has a lot of pressure points. When the child walks on the feet barefoot, the blood circulation improves, the immunity power improves this. 
the massaging of the internal organ happens, the arches of the foot develop, the spine health will improve, the proprioception, the mental focus, everything will improve when the child is walking barefoot. But every time if you give a slipper to the child, okay, my child's feet is getting dirty. What happens is the child is modifying his gait or his walking pattern according to the footwear he or she is wearing. By doing that, you've already challenged their posture. You've already made the child's barefoot muscles to not work. When the child is working barefoot, the child's core muscles are working. The child's posture muscles are working. The child's uh, intellectual process is working. So that one workout is more than enough if you can give the child. Mostly, I'm seeing a lot of yogic asanas being talked about. And uh, I know a lot of uh, my patients are here who are hypermobile. The word hypermobility I've included here is most of your child within the year of one to seven years are already mobile. Their ligaments are very lax. Their spine ligaments are very lax. And if you're teaching those kids only to do overstretching, over bending, it is causing a havoc on the posture of the child. So a balance has to be there. Your child within one to 10 years doesn't need yoga, yoga, yoga. You can do yogic asanas in the form of breathing. You can do it in the form of pranayama, but somersaulting, over bending, doing bhujang asana, these all will cause your spine to overstretch beyond a certain limit. And then it causes problem later on when the child comes and sees me. Because most of the parents will try to bring the child at the age of like 11 or 12. That's the approximate time when the child starts to complain of problem with the pain in the back, problem in the neck, problem with the knee, or they're walking in an awkward way. You have laid the foundation because yogic asanas were not meant to be done by the small children because their body is already lax. Their body, you know, the child pose when we talk in yoga, the child automatically can do a child pose within that one to seven years of age. Post seven to 12 or 13 years of age is the time when we should emphasize a bit of yoga, but not overstretching, not going beyond a part where your ligaments can just go lax. That is one of the things which I keep talking about a lot of my sessions because there's a long, lot of wrong myths going on. Okay, exercise means just yoga. Yoga is stretching, 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 but you need to build strength, strength, posture, strength. These are the key things which your child needs to work on. Now, always encourage a good balance sense. So always make your child to brush the teeth, stand on both the foot together and brush your teeth. Always make your child sit on both the sides of the hip, sit on a chair, well on the hips, and then eat your lunch. So these are little, little things which you need to be observant about. And you can add in a lot of kids are hearing me and I think they will take home a very good message for themselves over here. Now, what my uh, take home message for all the parents here is you will try to add any of these movements which I've shown in this picture every two hours for the child, only five repetitions of each. So we can ask the child to go get a bottle of water from the kitchen. So don't let the bottle of water be there in the desk of your chair, like child's uh, desk. Don't make your child lazy. Don't make your child dependent on you. The two things which I've observed always is the parents have always carried the backpack of their child from the school to their home. By doing this, you're automatically taking away the child's power to engage his core muscles, to do the proper workout for his posture muscles, which when they wear a bag, they know how to hold their posture. Two things, now the bus is not there, now the bags are not there. What you have to do is don't give every kind of food or plate onto their hands. Ask them, go to the kitchen, go get your plate. Go make a salad and get it to your table. Go, uh, go to the kitchen and water the plants. Go to the kitchen and go cut a fruit. When they cut the fruit, that is an activity for their fingers, for their hands, for their brain for their cognitive function. You can give things which are not very, very dangerous for them to handle if they're of a young age. But always important thing is now at this moment when we are not letting them go out into the outside world, when they're in a secured environment, their proprioception, their balance sense would go down. So you've got to challenge that cognitive power in their brain too. 
so that they can do well once the lockdown opens they really have to go down to the school then so you can add in run so maybe a 10 rounds of run inside your dining table then a stretch where they can pull one one leg but little bit of exercise a little bit of jump not for hypermobile folks but for folks who are all good they can do a minute jump 10 rounds that's enough then if people have tampolin and i've seen a lot of children have tampolin again they can do about 10 rebound exercise that helps to build up more calcium in your bones kneeling exercises going and bending and picking things up from the floor you can put a match uh, open the matchbox lay the matchsticks on the floor ask your kid to pick all these matchsticks and put it in the matchbox do them three times a day again beat obesity build flexibility build motor skills one exercise the child can do also try to sit down in kind of a butterfly pose the child can lie down for some time straight on the floor that again helps to break the monotony of continuously sitting and listening to the lectures and try to take a ball overhead and try to raise your hands as much as possible make the child stand around the dining table you can do that you can have a basketball uh, you know holder and try imagining that you're throwing the ball into it uh, cycle if you are in an atmosphere where there's not many covid cases the child can go down and cycle about two rounds of their uh, society and a power kicks where the child can sit on the chair and then kick their legs out and in a bit of hops and a bit of skip get a skipping rope get them to skip every maybe uh, two hours four times a day that way you're building up to cut down the calorie you're also building up their muscles and breaking down the dysfunctions too and get them things where they can do passing the parcel so that they know how to pick up a thing parcel around no greet people talk to talk to your family members together all of you as a parent as a mom dad small child or any other child all of you can play together grandmothers their grandfathers there all of you can be engaged and do this game together and also do throwing of the balls so you're using your shoulder muscles and trying to hit a shot and trying to catch a ball and then try to shoot and then try to play a you know a little bit of table tennis so these are basic things where your child feels more entertained when you're doing it in a playful manner and try to engage your child every two hours so we can say that our lectures are going on long and the teachers don't give breaks. So what I would say is on the chair also, you can ask the child to do sit to stand about 20 counts. Come on, stand up. You know, all of you stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. These are basic little things, which I think we just have to get a little more, uh, uh, you know, actively involved and in getting the child to do it. We know like a lot of parents are busy, but there are ways around it. We can get it done there. Okay. Now, this is very important, the eye exercises. So most of the child now, which I will see is the pandemic of myopia. Myopia means short-sightedness. So most of the child nowadays call up, uh, the parents call up, they say, my neck is paining, my child's head is paining, or the, this part of the head, the head is throbbing for them. This is as a result of the eye strain because of too much digital uh, time for them or the screen time for them. So you got to give them many, many breaks. Every two hours, I said, they will have to look up. Always tell them, look up to the fan, look up to the fan, look up to the wall, look up to the side of the wall. By doing them, you are increasing their attention span outside of the computer. This is your computer. My eyes only seeing this. Now, after a moment, my posture will get changed according to my eyeball. Half of your back pain, half of your neck pain depend on the eyeballs. Many of the childs would have squint eyes by now because of the too much screen time. Many of the times, one of the eyeballs has moved on to the right. So we see every child individually and we have a mechanism by which uh, we can see them online and we know which side the eyeball has gone. Whichever side your eyeball has gone, your spine tend to drift to that side. And that causes your spinal curvatures to change. And then again, there's, it's a big, uh, big, big responsibility as physiotherapists to change and make the changes in the child's spine, which is you got only one spine and to not work on the spine 
um, it's at an early age, it's, it's a challenging affair for us. So a digital detox with eye exercises has to be done. So always remember, look up, look down, look up, look down, look side, look side. You can ask the child to throw the ball either side and catch a ball in either side. Sitting on the chairs within the four walls of the house, you can do so many things. You just have to get ideas and just be innovative and implement it, you know. So did the friends of the Allen Kinder ever worry about posture? Pavika and everybody who all are listening to me, did you ever see giraffe coming to my clinic, Pavika? Or uh, Kranti, did you ever see a giraffe or an elephant come and see me and sit in my waiting room to get their posture corrected? No, right? Why giraffe is tall? Because the giraffe is always outside, is always trying to pick uh, leaves from the trees. What does the giraffe eat? Okay, so to having a good posture like a giraffe, a tall, long neck, you have to understand that you've got to be mobile. You've got to be moving. You've got to challenge your balance concept. Uh, I make my child sit all the time. I'll get the food served on the table. The child's movement ability of the joints decreases, right? So earlier, I would have my clinic with people with 70 to 80 year of elderly folks with knee pain, back pain, arthritis pains. Then came an age like five years back from now, I had people from about maybe 50 to 30 years of age. All of them had back pains, a tsunami of back pain. Now we have kids which are around like 18, 19 and till seven or five years of child having back pain and neck pain. Why so? The module of care which we give as physios is movement, mobility and momentum. So three things you've got to get your child to do. If you want to be, uh, let the child always uh, be told that you are like an animal kingdom. Elephant is playing, elephant is going. Uh, giraffe is kind of playing in the field. It's kind of uh, eating his food by running around the field. All these concepts have to be told the child that these are things which are so, so important, not sedentary lifestyle and momentum is the key of, key word for you. Now, this is something which is very, very, uh, very true. So pandemic has become a pandemic or pandemic. So we have child or children with obesity because of sedentary lifestyle. There's increased pain, back, back pain episode, a lot of insomnia. A lot of parents have complained to me that their child are not getting sleep in the night. So you know that exercise helps you to get good endorphins or the hormones which are released, the serotonin or the happy hormones which are released only when you excite, when you jump around, when you burn your calories. Same thing happens for your child. And especially if the child is a girl, especially if your child is within the age of seven till 10, this is a time to get your girls very active, very, uh, they should be doing a lot of movement because after seven and 10, they'll get into a period when they might get their periodic pay, uh, periods. And that is a time when I'm seeing a lot of youngsters now having a pandemic of obesity because of PCOS, because they don't get their periods in time. And it is all because of sedentary lifestyle. So you are laying the foundation for their hormonal health. Remember one to seven years of age, your child, if it's a girl, ask them to do mobility, ask them to be mobile as much as possible so that they don't have obesity, their hormonal health is good post 10 years of age, good? Nagging headaches, a lot of headaches come from a spine which has got crooked or has scoliosis, painful wrist joint, a lot of kids have a lot of painful wrists, all the time they're playing with the gadgets. So these small fingers, have tendons, they get swelled up and they get painful because of this. So try to get more active, you know. I had a farmer come to me, he never complained of back pain. Why so? You know, the farmer can sit in all in a duck squat manner and can grow the lawn or could grow his crops. His all, whole body exercise is done in that posture. He gets his nice vitamin D coming from the sun he eats food what he has grown. So the best exercise is what you are doing is the primitive exercises. What I call is the old time exercises where we didn't have gadgets. 
when we didn't have bed, when we didn't have sofa. So sit on the floor, eat your one plate meal on the floor in a squat manner or in a butterfly manner. Ask your kids to sit on the floor. Ask your kids to put their laptop on a stool and sit on the floor. These are ways where we can get their muscles to work or the anti-gravity muscles to really do the right function for them, right? So I've been conducting a lot of telehealth posture sessions and where we work on the arches of your spine. A lot of time, the child's arch has gone. The spine has got curved to right or to left side. And in either of these cases, it can cause a havoc into your spinal health and overall general health because spine has a lot of nerve supplies going to various organs of the body. If your spine is not straight, a lot of organs get compromised because of this. So kind of uh, consult on a telehealth basis for each child individually and learn what is good for your child and in, engage them in the exercises, which is meant only for them as per the condition they have for themselves. Right, so all the children are laughing now. How many of you are like this? I gave them a cozy couch and there is a cushion at the back and my spine has gone for a toss with the screen time. So a lot of times I see parents say, I've been working, both of us are working and there's no way we can engage the child. The classes, uh, the school timings get over by two or three. Now, there's no way we can engage the child. So I give a phone and the child is all down like this. Now in this posture, your child's neck has gone faulty. All one year lot, the entire pandemic, the child is like this. His eyesight, his hearing power, his ability to you know, open his shoulders, ability to breathe well, is all get diminished by this posture. So this is not what we want and this pandemic. So sitting is the new smoking. Smoking is injurious for our lung. Sitting is more injurious for our lung. So what pandemic is a biggest uh, culprit of whatever we can say is nature's uh, We are teaching us a lesson that we should move more focus about our health. But we should also understand two things. The kind of loss of life which has happened is majority linked with people who have less physical activity in a day. So more active you are, more mobile you are, you sit less, you will have good bone strength, you'll have good muscle endurance, and you'll have good lung power. So in either which case, sitting is a total no-no. Too much sitting is almost like smoking a cigarette, almost. Now this common areas of pain with the child talk about is ears, jaws, neck, elbow, hips, and hand. The thing which used to happen for the young ID professional now is similarly uh, being uh, happening to the young children now. So be very, very about your uh, children. So when the child is talking about the neck pain or the back pain, try to see what is going wrong when he's sitting on the computer. Make the child sit on the ground. The moment you make the child sit on the ground, make the child sleep on the ground, 50% of the problems of the child can be addressed in this manner. So always remember the gadgets which we have got, the comfort which we have got are causing problems in the spine. The more natural form of sitting you do, your spine would be very happy. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of children are here already. They have the syndrome. So... <clears throat> Many of the parents, please look at the picture here. If you see the child's one side of the shoulder blade is little higher than the other, or his hip is higher than the other, uneven hips, asymmetry in the back, there's a visible curve, either C or S shape. This is a time when you kind of raise an alarm bell and then you call a physiotherapist like us or like me who would be seeing your page. Uh, children online through telehealth mediums and we know exactly what's happening with the child because this will kind this posture we can correct within the age of 18 years only post 18 their spine is already formed or fused or matured within the age of 18 any child can be corrected of the scoliosis if it is not congenital many of the times uh, the orthopedic surgeon will ask the child 
to come and get a surgery done where the spine is kind of wired and then a brace is put on the child for a long term till the age of 22 25 and all but nowadays with advanced assessment and early assessment early awareness being raised uh, because uh, i was working in the uk so many of my uh, like assignments were with schools and many of the times we would kind of engage all the kids in the school study each individual's uh, spine, child's spine draw an assessment and any child who presented with scoliosis would be taken on to my program where we teach them some scoliotic preventive exercise protocol remember the spine which is having this kind of a format can start when the child was a newborn also, when the child was in your uterus or when the child was born or within two years of the child's development also, this formats can happen. There are various conditions of the body because of which a child can have scoliosis. One of the reasons being hypermobility when you have asked the child to embark on two early yogic asanas. That's the reason when I say one to seven years of age, let your child be as natural as possible. Do not try to ask them to do super bendy exercises. Their body is already bendy. If you move the spine away from the center, people like us find it really tough to work on each individual spine at their age because they need to cooperate with us. They need to do the exercises to correct the spine. So the pandemic of scoliosis is very much seen and I've seen almost like 20 children now in this whole entire one year span. I have other parents, other kids also who have this, but majority of the adults come to me after age of 30, 35 with this condition. At that age, we can only do muscle imbalance correct, but we cannot correct the spine. But a lot of times there's a lot of techniques with which we correct the spine too. But your child and your pattern of making them learn the right posture can save them from getting the spine. So work on their child's posture right from day one. So I know a lot of kids are sitting like this at this moment when they're listening to me. How many of you are sitting like this? Who's uncle A, who's uncle B, who's uncle C and who's uncle D? All of you can have your videos on. Let me see how are you, how all of you are sitting. Who's, who's peeping into this computer screen now? And who is just falling onto the chair now? Yeah, anybody? Who is doing this kind of a posture? Lot of kids always try to do this kind of a posture, which is so, so faulty. So always remember, you got, don't have to sit like Uncle A, Uncle B, Uncle C, Uncle D. You got to sit in a nice manner, a very comfortable way. Okay. Anybody can uh, term this kind of a picture? What do you mean by this picture? Vijay, if you're there. Vijay, you're there? Kindly unmute yourself. Vijay, you're there. I can't hear you. Sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're saying something? Yeah. Yeah, Vijay, tell me. I want your video on too. I want my video on too. Okay. So I want to see how all of you are sitting because the posture which you attain, your children will also attain. This is soft. I'm going to make We're watching it on a TV. We're watching it on a large screen TV right now. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Okay, Vijay, tell me. What do you mean by this? <laughs> well, clearly, we, that's how we have become, right? That's how we became. So. Uh, uh, Ruchi, what do you think about this picture? Um, we're going back to the same age, I mean, from where we evolved. I mean, uh, given the current scenario and getting addicted to all these gadgets and the lifestyle that we have, we're going back to those old days from where we, you know, started. Are, are yeah, so we are, in simple terms, we are back to pavilion from where we started, right? We started yeah. from being a four petal animal. And then we became a bipedal as a matter of invention. We started hunting animals. We cooking our, we started growing our crops. And then we started being very intelligent in trying to build buildings, instrumentation. We became an engineer. And then we are back to sitting in a 
manner. So the evolution of a man, if you see that time, this uh, the monkey or the Homo sapien, what we our ancestors were, they were very mobile. They used to climb up the mountain. They used to do things around their house, uh, like uh, trees. They used to jump around the trees. But we as human beings, we're just stuck onto the computer. We're just as if like we're glued to the desk also. So this kind of a format has given us all the disease condition. So the man of this today's time, it has given rise to obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure. And then we say, okay, the kind of food we eat also. All of them together has caused this problem. So what is the key thing which can we can do, Vijay, here? What can we do here, Kranti and Vijay? And others too can uh, join in and answer and reply, please brainstorm. What, what can we change here for this gentleman? For your child, us. what we can do? What best mm -hmm. we can do? Move the child, I think, most importantly, like you mentioned earlier in the talk, get the child to move move more you know was it just sitting and if possible get them into a standing position i personally use a standing you know this doc i use a standing desk right correct That's correct that very really helpful so i guess we have to find ways to get around this whole sedentary posture situation we are in right yeah yeah so the key thing uh, here is we got to make your child also have a standing desk for some time make them stand and then listen to the lecture for at least 20 minutes uh, whoever suma can you please uh, unmute yourself yeah so now what happens is in a day if you're not bearing weight on your bones you don't let calcium deposit in your body always remember that whenever there is a case of uh, any injury or fracture and a person is not able to weight bear on their legs their calcium ability to absorb into the bone goes down same thing is happening in the pandemic time when you're not walking the time you used to walk the number of times you would have movement and the moment you don't stand you, on your legs, you don't let your legs get the weight. And the calcium doesn't deposit as a result of that. When your calcium is not depositing in your bones, you get your bones into your early onset of osteoporosis. So I have young children who are around 18, 19, 20 with osteoporosis. Can you imagine the osteoporosis word was often a word always heard by us when we saw an old lady coming after 65 years old or a lady coming after 60 years. Now I see young boys with osteoporosis. Only two reasons. The entire pandemic, they have not done any workout. They don't stand. They don't stand. They don't even go to the kitchen to do anything. They order everything on the swiggy. The food comes on the table. They eat it. They throw the leftover food and they're always working. Now, what happens as a result of that? The bony deposition, which is so essential for our bones, not happening. Calcium is the key for our heart muscles to work. For any kind of hormones to function, calcium is needed. Now, when calcium is not being deposited in the bones, how do you think your body functions would improve? So our chemical activity in the brain, our ability to think, Everything is dependent on calcium. So if you don't stand, if you don't do weight bearing, we know what is happening, okay? And that is the reason, like most, majority of the time I've seen that parents will send their kids down to play for one hour. That one hour play is not doing any good to your child. 24 by seven, in that 24 by seven, eight hours of sleep I take out. Within that other hours of sleep, other hours, other hours, I want your child to be more mobile, more active. And especially during the pandemic, ask your girl to or a boy to go get the bottle from the kitchen. Get to the kitchen and ask them to water the plants in the garden. Ask them to squat in the garden and do some digging work in the garden. Get them to mop the floor. You know, all these activities will build muscles, will help to deposit bone calcium for them. And you see your child will develop and gain height. But the standard ap approach is we are getting them to be pampered. That is one thing. But too much pampering is not good for them in the long run. You should understand 
the sequence of events which can lead into diseases later on, okay? Right, so that is what I call this is the healthy balance. Today to all the parents and all the children, I am prescribing a plate, a buffet. I'm giving you a buffet. You decide which buffet you want. You want a buffet of healthy mind platter. So I will divide my time in a day into different, different segments, different, different slots. So I'll have a sleep time, eight hours of sleep for the child. Physical time, as I said, I will want it to happen every two hours. Five, five counts. It could be jogging, it could be running, it could be mopping the floor, it could be going to the kitchen and watering the plants, anything of that order. Focus time, which is your study time. Time in. So always there is a time in and a time out. So you tell your child, okay, you've seen the screen time, finish, get over with it. And a downtime when they can rewind. They have to detox from the screen time. The blue light, which is emerging from the phones, will keep your pineal gland in the brain active. So these child are not getting sleep in the night. Half of the parents are calling me up and telling, Dr. Anjali, my child is not sleeping. Now I can understand insomnia is there for the adults, but the young children, young children of five, seven years, eight years are not sleeping in the night because you have taken away their playtime. Playtime can be done in the house. Why not let them play in the house? also connect in time. So there's a time when they need to connect with their uh, loved ones, with their, with their friends. Now, everything we'll say is online. But as I said, in the online session, get your kids to dance together, to exercise together, to eat together, to do some, you know, mini, mini skills together. So what you can do, ask them to do is do a Rubik's Cube together or try to, you know, do a needle and thread together or do knitting together. So these are fine motor skills. You're breaking off their monotonous pattern of just looking at the screen all the time or listening at the time. So all this is passive work. What we got to do, make them do in sitting also is active movements. The moment you do active movements for them, the brain is always stimulated. The moment the brain is stimulated, you will find the child will sleep better in the night. The moment the child sleeps better in the night, child's ability to absorb food is better. Immunity is also good in that way, okay? So remember the key word to tell your child is stretch. Always ask your child to stretch your arms maybe 10 or 20 times every time he or she is sitting virtually. So come on, take your hands up and open your arms with a long yawn. So remember when we yawn, what we do, we kind of stretch ourselves. So body has its natural ability to take the carbon dioxide out, get more oxygen in. So yawning was a fashion of breaking the fatigue, of breaking the monotony. Same thing, stretching. Just stretch your arms every two hours, every one hour. Perfect word for them. We are not going into too much of medical jargons for them because they just need to pick up little things which they can incorporate. So today what you can give them, ask them to maintain a diary. Ask them, choose four things they will do from the activity. I'll go back to that picture. And ask them what all activities they will do every two hours. They got to do it. And they got to time it for five counts. And then you see the beauty of how functional they'll become. So I stand for good posture. So always remember, stand up. Stand up, stand up, stand up. All of you can stand up now from your chair. Get some momentum, get some mobility now. So this is the time to get mobile now. So all of you can put your videos on, please. So we'll get into a little mobility. Get your children also together. Pavika, Pranti, get your children. Are they all sleeping now? Vijay, this lecture was for the children too. <laughs> <laughs> they're coming, they're coming. <laughs> they're coming, yeah. Were, uh, yeah, Pavika. Running around the house, literally. Running right. So all house. of us stand together. Adya, Anaga, and where's the little one? Oh, he's uh, making us do some ex exercise right now. Okay. Now everybody lie down. Put your hair legs down and raise your hip up. Okay. Yeah, exercise. Lie down. Lie down. Oh. Come here, bitta. Lie down. Put your head down. Head down. Head down. Raise your hip. Your leg down. 
and put your heels and toes down bridge 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 side yeah. come bridge bridge and lift your hip up bridge very good not a not a complete overflowing of the tummy but <laughs> little tummy down little tummy <laughs> down <laughs> and lift up just a bridge jay rahe beta just once a bridge yeah bridge ah uh, ante ante all of you the parents can also join and do ruchi you also do pavika very good all of you will click the photo of your children navdeep you also sent me the picture of your child what they are doing very good very good perfect okay good job suma sarita where are your kids sandeep Minu, please get your kids to get involved. Okay, so this exercise, I want you to start your day with your child with this one exercise. This is one exercise which will help to build your spine, and it will help to bring all fatigue down. Whether as a parent or whether as a child, you are doing. But this is a good exercise to let your spine lengthen. and also break the fatigue which builds up while sitting and listening to the lecture for long term all right high five high five all the kids high five high five ji perfect very good good job for all of you very good well done the next exercise now get your racket or ball all of you get your ball racket whatever game you have with you bat ball whatever come on all of you yeah. in this one on that in this one good perfect uh, doctor perfect. while they are getting just a time check we are um we are beyond time all right okay we'll try to end it as soon Those as possible might be yeah right so now try to play racket sports all the time when you're sitting on your desk you could do bowling batting whatever you can do okay these are very good ways every time you are in like engage in a work you want to distract yourself try to uh, get your child into some kind of a sporting skill very good awesome next is take the stair everybody try to climb the steps get on to the bed and get down from the bed get on to the sofa get out of the sofa climb the bed climb off the bed get on to the bed get out of the bed get on to the sofa pavika get on to the bed get out of the bed okay now this is one activity you will include for your child 10 10 rounds of this okay wow pavika has his own bed stairs everything good job pavika good job come down all of you so this we will include every day i want a video of all the kids next time whoever are doing this okay in these coming two days what the kids are doing i want a video of what the child have done Okay, parents. Promise. Yes, ma'am. Yes, 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 yes. Wonderful. Okay, now twinkle toe. Come on, stand on one leg, all of you, like a ballet Anaga. dance. Anaga. Come on. Babika. One leg, and you let your arms fly. This is a very good exercise to increase the balance of the body. okay and try to maintain the balance keep your body straight very good keep your body straight perfect awesome this also you can do every day perfect now stair master all of you sit on the chair and put your legs up on the chair here sit on the chair put your legs up sit on the chair 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 Put your leg up. Put your leg up. 
yeah cozy excellence yes so must to all like good. good job good job lift your leg up mummy also playing go balance yeah yeah good good okay so this also you can include as one of the exercises now come on everybody will jog and run parents and children jog and run run and jog run and jog jump 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 and come back come back come back come back come back come back ready come on very good very good very good good job okay now in between my classes i will keep moving my arms up and down and up and down and up and down okay i must up and down okay and down. all the time i will keep my arms up okay so these basic exercises all the parents please encourage your child to do okay so that's uh, my workshops which i do with various schools and we look at the postures of each child individually and correct the postures as i said have your child to hold the book on your head if the child's head is down the book will fall off if the child's posture is good the book will stay there this is one way you can understand if the child's posture is good or bad very good and essential way to understand how the posture of the child is so now we are open for questions thank you and that's my contact details and people can reach out to me and let me just take the questions now okay uh ma'am yeah yes can i just show you my son's posture yeah uh, i'll just take the slide off okay then i can go on to the video full mode yeah 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 can i show now yeah show sorry sorry no normal kitchen ela sure Uh, normal get in the uh, the you know what he is doing he is just putting his belly in the front all the time like yeah, she'll, like this yeah shilpa so i'll i'll look i'll connect with you one on one for this okay 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 yeah and you have to get him to do that exercise there uh, in the morning and then in the evening trying to do okay. the bridge but he's okay. trying to do the bridge in the wrong way he's trying to inflate his uh, tummy more up so like he's doing the bhujangasan actually Ah, uh, so Bhujangasan, don't let him do because I think he is hypermobile, just like the way many parents are, and that is causing his tummy to just protrude out. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, Dipti, do we have questions here now? Yes, doctor. One question from uh, uh, Sharanya was how to avoid W sitting. I think the posture of sitting down in a W. She meant. How old is the Sharanya child, Sharanya? The how old is the child who does W sitting? Uh, she's six and a half. Six and a half. She continues to do it still. Um. Yeah. When she's unconscious, but when when we notice, we immediately tell her to go away from the W sitting. Then. Uh, yeah now it is reduced but still so remember still the reduced. main reason your child does a w sitting is is too much flexibility in the hip area okay yeah. and if the child has done this w sitting from right from the time the child was born you know and the hips were kind of anti rotated it's very easy for the child to go into a w sitting that means the child's core muscles are not activated uh out here uh, i see a lot of parents are there a lot of kids have already been seen by me and the majority of the cases their core muscles which are their tummy muscles and the back muscles are not trying to grip the body posture okay. so we will have to work on their core stability and the moment their core stability comes better you'll see this uh, w sitting will also go back the reason the w sitting is happening is is not trying to engage the core Okay, it's it's a okay. way to not engage the core. Basically, the body fails to engage the core, and then it goes into double sitting. So that's what we have to work on the core and work on the body balance of the hip, and then things will be better. Sure. 
So okay. I will take a personal consultation with you. And yeah, you. one to one, we will do that for her. Yeah. yeah. Sure, sure. Sure, yeah. sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Prabhjot wanted guidance on height and weight increase. Uh, you spoke about screens. That was the second part of the question. Okay. Uh, regarding weight, uh, Prabhjot, are you there? Can you come online? Like with the video of the child? Uh, yeah, I'm there. Okay. Uh, can you have yeah, the my uh, daughter? Is... Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm not too ready for it. Okay, wait. Uh, yeah, can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I have twins. Uh, they are uh, six and a half years old, boy and girl. Uh, and my girl eats, uh, she has a um, very, uh, I don't know, she's hungry all the time, but uh, doesn't eat uh, well. And uh, I wanted to know her height is also less, her weight is also less for her age, uh, quite less actually. Uh, she is very, very active. She is, um, um, I mean, there is no problem in her activeness and all. It, uh, her motor skills, everything is fine. Just that uh, she's very, very slim, very thin, and um, uh, her weight is not increasing. Her height is not increasing. And so just for that, I wanted to know if special exercises are there. Yeah. So both of them of the same height, as you mentioned, both are twins. No, my uh, son is, um, um, he is taller, I think, by about um, 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters, okay. And what's her age? You said six and a half. His, six weight, and a half. his height and weight is all fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's just and the daughter you mentioned about. My boy's height and weight are all fine. Yeah. So the key thing is sometimes when the child has too much activity, but too less of nutrition going in and no, too less of digestion happening in the body. These are three things which all combined together gives a child a health. So you have to look at also at nutritive levels, what kind of food the child is eating and also look at the posture the child is eating. Is the child's posture not good? Because of which his gastric juices are not liberated in the tummy, which doesn't digest the food well. So, as I said, if there is a stoop posture, that's Actually, again one culprit. Pardon? Actually, she's not eating properly. She doesn't want to eat. She doesn't like to eat. She doesn't want to sit and eat. I mean, uh, uh, maybe because of some posture issue, if it is, I don't know the reason behind it. I have tried a lot of things on her. Nothing is working on her. She, she just does not want to eat at all. I don't know why the, what the reason is. This has happened only during the lockdown or is happening before that? No, no, no. It's been there. It's been there always. It's been there. Uh, something which uh, helps her eat well. There are certain reasons uh, when she doesn't eat well. and There are conditions when she eats well. She does not want to sit and eat. She wants to play and dance around and eat. Uh, one reason is that. Other reason is she loves snacking. She doesn't like meals. And good, third good. reason is she's very slow. So because she sees her brother is eating so fast and he's done with all of that, he's free and she's still going on and will take a long time. So uh, she gets discouraged. Yeah. So uh, those are like, we have to look at the meal patterns or the meal behaviors of the child and also look at what the child is eating. So maybe you can connect me one and one and discuss her, her case individually too. But what as a message to everybody I will give you is if the child is too active you will have to look at the food ingredients which you give to the child is also something which is not calorie deficient which are also helping the child's weight to be maintained okay something like simple like ragi ragi is good of calcium protein you can give to all the child and if the child is vegan if the child is gluten wants gluten free everything else can be given to the child so something like I always tell parents that introduce ragi in the growing up years of the child. Ragi, a malt, ragi, dosha, ragi, idli. These are things uh, which will give you nutrition at the same time. You might think the child is not eating well a lot. But at least one thing which the child has eaten is important. And try to go for small portion of food with nutrition. So it's not like it has to be 
a big plate of meal with the Chinese to finish, have small bowls, but in that small bowl, put all the nutrition. Okay, so something which the child loves, make it more colorful, like with plenty of vegetables or add in something which your child has a flavor, at the same time you have nutrition in it. So try doing these little, little things and see if the child gets better. All right. Sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Dipti, do you have any question, Doctor, but the person is not here, so I don't know if they can explain. The question was on correcting rounded shoulders and uh, the child is sitting mostly with the uh, sitting or walking with bent back, but uh, the parent is not in the call to explain more details. Okay, so I think uh, the parent is not in the... What was the name of the parent who asked this? Jyoti. Pardon? Jyoti. Jyoti. Okay, okay. So the child has a we long arm. Contact you, um, so maybe they'll contact you. Okay, the child has a long arm. No, she mentioned uh, 11 year child please guide on correcting rounded shoulders and mostly sitting or walking with bent back i do not know that yeah so bent back means this way okay so this is called as kyphosis so if we term uh, different postures there is a uh, kyphosis there's lordosis though shilpa if you're hearing me your child has something called as lordosis where the tummy is all protruded out and i walk like a lord if my spine is bent my posture yeah. is called as Kyphosis. Now, postures okay. which are kyphosis can be something that the child is inherited from the parents congenitally. Second thing has acquired during the time period of growing up years, always sitting hunch and you know closing the arms. This again is called kyphosis. This will actually cause loss of appetite in the child. This will also cause breathing issues in the child. So kyphotic postures are the main cause of less oxygen second thing more breathing discomfort more chest infections so to correct it is to always remember the thumb i told you is have a book on your head try asking the child to put the book back but sometimes some of the kyphosis are fixed kyphosis they need the help of a specialized physios who give certain pattern exercise to correct few muscles of the upper joint so one on one they can connect with me and then we can correct it Shilpa, again, the lordosis, which I told you, so again, the child might have been born with that posture, uh, might have acquired the posture of you and your husband. Or what happens is, as because of the too much sitting, uh, you're muted, actually. You unmute yourself, yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, if I started suddenly, he was not like that before. Yeah, so uh, he's doing too much sitting now, Shilpa? Two, three he's doing too much Shilpa, uh, sitting now? All the time he's sitting uh, Yes, he is. He is. Yeah. So to all the parents, every child who's seated for long hours, their muscles of the hip will get shortened. Okay. They'll become short. As a result of that, the back muscles will try to arch themselves to yeah. you know, balance the body gravitational force. And then yeah. the tummy looks protruded out. This happens yeah. during, this is a typical posture which most women have during pregnancy. The pregnancy yes. erotosis. Okay, because yes, your hip yes. flexors are tight and you have an arch at the back. The same posture yeah. that all the children are getting during this lockdown. You will That's have right. to ask the child to do whatever activities I have told them. These five, six <laughs> postures, ask the child to do in every two hours. Five, 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 five. Without fail, they got to do. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. We have a Nabdeep, direct you have Any question you have? No, ma'am. Thank, thank you. I will. It, this was a very useful session, and I will move my body every one hour. 
All right. Thank you. Clap for you. Thank you, ma'am. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. All right, Dupti. I think we've come. Uh, Ruchi, you have a question? Pavika, Ruchi? Uh, no, I'm actually following uh, when we last met and you had instructed certain things for Pavika. So I am following those things. Yeah. And uh, I'm making her move a lot in the house. Yeah. Yeah. So Ruchi, uh, Kranti and all they and all of them actually have uh, had the kids been uh, brought to me. So they all follow the exercise sessions and they do it regularly. I think all the parents should uh, follow them also their motivation they have always been behind the kids and they've always helped the kids to get to a good posture and keep doing the exercises till they grow till 18 years okay so the game is whatever posture you are building them now they'll have a good base of support when they're 18 or 19 so you yourself will give them a nice back and a neck uh, if you get them a good posture yeah so okay Dipti, we should end up Yes, doctor. Yeah. Congrats. All right, parents. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks you very Thank much. you so much. It was a great session. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you, ma'am. Bye.